What's going on everybody? My name's Dan and welcome to my channel Dan Demand Gaming. In this video we'll be learning about first aid and seven days to die alpha 18. Now as usual these tips should apply to alpha 19 as well. So they're not actually healing items but we'll start with the splint and the plaster cast and those are used for whenever you break or sprain your leg. So if I go into my god mode here and fly way up high, I'm going to fly up just a little bit and I'll fall from right here. You'll see in the bottom left hand it's going to hurt both my health and my max health. It's also going to give me a red bone indicating 59 minutes now. That is a status effect. So if I go to my attributes, you'll see my agility is being debuffed by one point and my fortitude is being debuffed by one point. So now if I climb back up on the ladder, you'll notice what's going to happen is I'm going to get hurt again and the timer is going to reset, but it's not going to go to two hours. So I don't want to die here. I'll be a little careful. Okay, so see the timer just went back. If I go to these again, they're still only debuffed one point each. So to treat a broken or sprained leg, you're either going to use your splint, which is going to cut off half an hour. So you'll see it's 29 minutes or the plaster cast, which is going to cut off 40 minutes. Now, usually it would cut off 40 minutes, but you'll see once you've used the splint, you can't stack the effects of both. And one last little trick to not breaking your leg as often is underneath your agility attribute, your parkour skill level one three and four will help you take less damage when you fall all the way up to level five where you won't break your leg at all while i'm hurt we might as well go over painkillers now painkillers are a pretty good way to heal yourself they're going to give you instantly 40 health so we'll take one right now and there's another cool little thing about them they have a plus 10 percent damage mitigation from what i understand damage mitigation isn't so much your damage resistance it's really more of like a cap on how much damage you can take in a single hit so that's a pretty cool little thing to it. But the trade-off is at negative 40 water. So if we go to here, you'll see about every, I think, two to three seconds. So about five seconds, my water will drop one. It's going to drop for a total of 40. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to figure out how to activate status effects in the debug menu. So if anybody knows, let me know in the comment section below. But we're going to do the same for the aloe cream, for the first aid bandage and the first aid kit. We're going to fly way up high. Let ourselves fall and pretend like we're bleeding. Now obviously the regular bandage just takes care of the bleeding, but your aloe cream will take care of the bleeding on top of give you 3 max health, and for the next 3 seconds you'll get 2 health a second. With the first aid bandage is going to give you a total of 25 max health, for the next 15 seconds it's going to give you 2 health a second, and with the first aid kit it's going to give you a whopping 90 max health, and for the next 90 seconds you'll be getting 2 health a second. And think of max health kind of like your injury status. The more beat up you get, the lower it's going to get unless you're taking medicine. Now obviously your first aid kit is going to be your most effective method of healing. So we'll really focus on how to craft that, but we'll also touch upon how to craft the first aid bandage. So before you craft the first aid kit, you're absolutely going to need the chemistry station. And you're going to need either the schematic for the chemistry station, or you're going to need your intellect level 4 and a yeah science of level 1. For the first aid bandage, you're going to need an intellect of level 5 and a yeah science 2. And for the first aid kit, you're going to need a Yeah Science Level 3 and an Intellect of Level 6. So after you have all those things, you're going to go to your craft menu by pressing Tab. You're going to click F to click the search bar, and you're going to type in First Aid Kit. What is it to make a first aid kit at a chemistry station? It is one blood bag, one grain alcohol, one bandage, and one sewing kit. So in this video, we're really going to focus on the blood bags, grain alcohol, and sewing kits. So starting with sewing kits, unfortunately, you can't craft them, but really, you're going to find them everywhere. You're going to find them in dumpsters, trash bags random containers, but most commonly you're going to find them in clothing containers like garment bags, dryers, washers, things like that. So really your best bet is to go into a house POI, see if you can find the laundry room, see if you can find the bedroom, see if you can find a few sewing kits there. And also there's a laundry mat POI. Now I had actually never seen the laundry mat POI until the making of this video, so I'll show it on screen now. Next we move on to grain alcohol. Now grain alcohol is a little bit more of a scarce resource. I've only ever found it in medical related containers like medical cabinets, medical piles, destroyed chemistry sets, things like that. Now the pill cases in the pop and pills containers, I usually only ever find at pop and pills or the hospital, but with these medical piles and these medical cabinets, I find them quite often in houses. These are in bathrooms and these are hidden behind paintings and in the walls. But ultimately the best way to gather grain alcohol is to farm corn. Now I'm not going to go too into farming, 
just because I covered that in my duct tape video. So if you wanted to know more about farming, I'd go check that video out once this video is over. And after you've collected a bunch of years of corn, it is five years of corn for one corn seed that can be crafted right in your pack. And after you craft it, you place them right into the farm plots. The same can be done for the aloe vera plant and the same can be done for the cotton plant for those first aid bandages. And according to the seven days to die Wikipedia, it takes two hours in real life for them to grow. And finally, we move on to blood bags. Now, unfortunately, in Alpha 18, they removed the ability to craft blood bags. So you're going to have to be looting for them. You can find them in random containers like sinks and trash bags. But I've really had a lot more luck, just like with the grain alcohol, finding them in medical cabinets, finding them in medical boxes, finding them in pill cases. So really your best bet. I'm already on top of a pop and pills here, so I'll come down in. And we'll fly in and we'll see if we can find any blood bags real quick. Just to show you how fast this is. Look at that. First one I opened, three blood bags right inside of it. Another really good POI to search for those medical containers is the hospital. Now obviously be really careful. You can see there's zombies going crazy everywhere. We got a medical pile right there, medical pile right there, medical cabinet right there. This place is loaded with medical containers. So let's say you've looted pop and pills and can't find another and you've looted the hospital. Your best bet is either depending on your game settings to wait for those to respawn the loot or to find yourself some regular old houses, find some bathrooms, and find the medicine cabinets. Like I said before, the medicine cabinets will have grain alcohol in them and they'll have blood bags in them. Unfortunately, this one didn't have a blood bag in it, but it does have grain alcohol, still proving my point that you're going to find medicine in the medicine cabinets. After you've collected everything, the first step is to make your corn into cornmeal. One ear of corn turns into one cornmeal. After you've made your cornmeal, the next step is to make grain alcohol. Now, grain alcohol can be made at the campfire or it can be made at the chemistry bench. Grain alcohol at the campfire is three cornmeal, one bottled water, but you require a beaker at the campfire to make cornmeal at the campfire. So in my opinion, if you find a beaker that early on, you should really just be focused on making the chemistry bench. At the chemistry bench, it is one cornmeal and one bottled murky water. So all together with everything in my pack, I can make 26 grain alcohol. So not a lot. Let's see what I can make for med kits with everything in my pack. So all together, I can make 10 med kits. The choke point is obviously the grain alcohol in the blood bag. So while that corn is growing, make sure you're out there looting for your grain alcohol and for your blood bags. There's also a perk that has to do with first aid. If you go to your fortitude attribute and down to the healing factor perk. With level 1, you'll find that you gain 1 HP every 60 seconds. Level 2, you gain 1 HP every 20 seconds. Level 3, which is where it starts to get really nice. Gain 1 HP every 12 seconds. Gain 1 max health every 40 seconds. Level 4, gain 1 HP every 6 seconds. 1 max health every 30 seconds. And the final healing factor stage. Gain 1 HP every 4 seconds and gain 1 max health every 20 seconds. Thank you so much for watching. If you found the video helpful, make sure to let me know in the comment section below. Click that like button, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified of my new 7 Days to Die content two times a week. Peace.